In the Understanding by Design module, I think it's really important to start with the module objective. After completing this module, learners will develop a COMPSI-based course design for a student-centered significant digital learning environment. So in the previous week or the previous module, um, you looked at creating a learning environment based on outcomes-based course design that aligned outcomes, activities, and assessments. And this module, you're looking at a COMPSI-based model. So it's really going to be important, if you've forgotten the difference between the competency-based and the outcomes-based, to take a look at the videos and the key ideas that we pointed you to in the previous module so that you can see the differences between the outcomes-based and the competency-based. And, and they really are the differences between working on a big, broad project and having that project drive the context of what your learner is doing compared to working on bits and pieces of activities that will emphasize skills, knowledge, abilities, and that will lead to testing. In the outcomes-based environment, there are no testing, there are no papers, it's a big project. In a competency-based environment, it is all about that measurement of the skills, abilities, and knowledge. One of the biggest differences between the UBD template and the uh, FINKS three column table is the um, more granular perspective or the more detailed perspective that the UBD template has. So in the example out of the book um, on nutrition, you'll see there are two goals here, two established goals. Um, and they're really very, very similar because they're really about nutrition and eating. So they're very closely connected. So some people could argue that you could write this as one goal. So there's one or two goals. In contrast, as you will see from the three column table for the course uh, 5313, you'll see that there are six or seven key outcomes, okay, and they're big and they're broad. Um, the first one is about looking at the broader perspective, the new culture of learning assignment. The second one is building your own learning philosophy. The third is the integration stage, which is where um, in the previous module you looked at a variety of environmental factors and developed an outcomes-based instructional design plan for student-centered learning. And then in this week, you're looking at or in this module, you're looking at developing a competency-based instructional design. So these are big, broad outcomes that focus on getting a student towards building a course um, or building that significant digital learning environment. So it's really important to remember when you're developing your UBD template that you take one or two of your outcomes out of your three-column table, because you should be using the same course design. Take one or two at most of your outcomes. Do not try to take all six or seven of your outcomes and drop them into your established goals section on your UBD template, because it will be too much work and too big of a document. So the focus with the three-column table is a big, broad, project-based perspective. It's big outcomes, but the focus on the UBD template is much more specific about questions, about understandings, about skills, about knowledge, about abilities, right? And different performances and different tasks and tests and assessment. So it's a much, much more granular approach and you have to take one or two of your outcomes. I apologize for the repetition, but this is really important. If you try to take all six or seven of your outcomes that you had in your outcomes map and drop it in, you'll have the massive template um, and it'll take an enormous amount of work. Right now, you can get enough out of this activity by simply taking one or two of your outcomes and building your UBD template from that perspective. With each of the outcomes that you drop in here and you turn into a goal and, and you can write just slightly modify them so it fits the goal format then you have to address the essential questions so for each of the goals that you're using if you're using two you need to a answer each of these sections or address each of these sections and so you go through each of the goals and make sure that you deal with the essential questions you deal with the understandings you deal with the key knowledge skills that need to be acquired and so on and so forth as you go through the particular we do encourage that you use uh, one of the two particular template formats that uh, we have shared with you. The one out of the book is the uh, uh, first or the original format. Um, and again, it's a, it's a, essentially a table with a three-page uh, uh, table with a variety of different sections. And the other format is the uh, uh, UBD template 2, which uh, really is only different in the one context that it adds a notion of transfer, what, it, what are students going to be able to do independently. And so it, it adds a transfer. So we uh, again, you can use either one of the two models. Using a table format allows a person to look at your template in a very or orderly fashion and it 
it, the structure helps you to organize your information. Now, I'm going to be going back to the uh, first version of the template to just touch on a couple of key things that are going to be important. So uh, there is no place for a big, hairy, audacious goal in uh, the UB template. It doesn't really work on this fashion. Now, some students have dropped it in above um, this area at the very, very top, and, and that's okay. But again, your established goals are really outcomes, so that's that's a, that's a connection you need to make. Um, again, be sure that you have addressed key questions and the understandings and all the different sectors for each of the goals. That's one thing we will be looking for. Okay. Look at, um, you know, the three different stages. Make sure they're identified and easy to follow. You've got the different stages. Now in the, the, uh, stage three about the planning of the learning experiences. This is where you really take a look at the activities. This is, this is what will the student be doing? Um, and you know, these are key things. So you really do need to have probably, you know, 10 activities per goal, so to speak, as a rule, uh, within reason. So you'll see you've got 19 different um, activities identified in, in stage three. You'll also notice that they, um, uh, there's the where to elements. It's really going to be important for you to establish what are the where to elements and include um, what that means and, and a bit of a legend to explain how this works. We do point you to a variety of examples in the uh, example page, and um, I want to caution um, everyone about the examples. While they um, are examples of good work, there might be some issues or idiosyncrasies or errors, right? They, they are not the gold standard. So you, 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 you want to actually make sure that you address the key issues that are important for what you're doing. Um, let me give you an example. In, in this student's uh, uh, th um, UBD template, they actually had three goals. Now, the reason I'm pointing this one out is that um, we encourage one or two goals, but you'll find that the second goal, learners will research and evaluate sources against right answers, really is sort of built into the first two goals because there's a compare and contrast, so you can get away with it. But you'll see that there's a lot of detail here. There's a lot of detail. There's there's five pages in this particular um, example, and 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 uh, you have to go into that detail uh, with with this number of goals. And they've included the where to example. Um, they also did the, the compare and contrast between the three column table, um, and you know they had the the where to example, and, and they talked about their preferences. So this is a, an example of some of the things that you might want to look at. Um, another student. Um, uh, that we have as as part of the example um, really went into great deal talking about the differences of the two, uh, pointing to um, an example of the three column table, um, and you know really dealt with the whole compare and contrast, and then um, showed her work in terms of the UBD uh, template. And they took one they took one outcome from the um, previous uh, three column table, and then they built it out into. Um, the UBD template. Um, and again, it followed the goals, the understanding, the essential questions. It, it used that, that format. Now, they didn't put it in a table. It'd probably be easier to view if they put it in some form of a table. But again, the key details are here. Everything's in place, so where to. Um, now, this person actually organized the where to in different sections. And, and while you can do that, um, I would probably just add the letters. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. And in this example, um, the student actually put together the UBD uh, design first, um, identified the goals, ran through the particular section, essential questions, you know, addressed all the key issues, stage two, stage three, they did the letters, and then they followed it up with an explanation. They followed up with a where to and their evaluation, the compare and contrast. So again, here's another example of, you know, making this your own and doing it in a way that's going to be important. But right here, you've got one big goal. And this is really, uh, you know, them creating that machine. And again, it's very similar to what the person had done, or actually they pulled a part of this out of um, the three column table, or actually they took a couple of, of goals and combined or outcomes and combined them into this one statement. So again, you know, you, you go uh, you have to work at this a little bit differently, and you, you work in a much more granular fashion. So keep these differences in mind when you move from the three-column table to the UBT template, and you take a look at these examples.